35. And we're going to start with introductions and welcome everybody. Uh, let's start with you, Sharon. Sharon Nolt uh, with the Altadoma School District and the Secretary. Um, I'm a parent from Chino Valley School District. Mo Mendoza, a board member with Ontario Montclair School District and also a parent. Uh, Russ Percy from Central School District, parent. Nicole King from Edwanda School District, teacher. Edith Rafa from Chafee District, parent. Martina Ortega, Ontario Montclair School District, and Chair. And Susan Bobbitt, the South Bend Administrator. And the public, can you introduce yourself? Yeah. Christy Sepulveda Birchett from Central School District. Do you want to introduce the young members of this audience? Would you like to introduce yourselves, children? I do. Okay, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm Dana. I call you class. All right. Hi, Dana. I'm Dana. Okay, no, 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 that's all. Just to say your name is This is the one Marcel is absent. It's an excused absence. I did see that you responded to his um, email. I actually did too within like five minutes, but I didn't reply all. My bad. So he's excused absence again. I understand he's not in. Um, Donna? Nicole? Hi, Nicole. I haven't heard from Donna why she isn't here. Um, she didn't mention it. Maybe she did. Martina Marie Rose. How about Marla? No Marla? Okay. Have some Marla. I'll give you a chance. Okay, and I'm supposed to review the parking lot for September 11th, and I'm so sorry mm -hmm. I was not here. Uh, my son is having a medical issue. <coughs> Thank you. 
to put on the agenda. I need a little more input because it's September 14th, Christy and Mo. If you could share with me a little more specifically what it is you want to know about the IED and the X I need to understand what that, that was. I said something about that the X pot is used for um, IEDs, something, and I think you addressed it. It's not. I believe that's what it was. Um, the IEEs in your presentation, they were only funded by the expot if a settlement agreement. Mm -hmm. And Mo had brought up the issue at that me particular meeting. She thought that it was that IEEs were all to, all over, okay. not just settlement agreements, so were we covered out of the expot. So that, that's what you were going to get back about was are they covered by the expot outside of a settlement agreement or only in the settlement agreement, an IEE. That was the issue at hand. Because I, I know for a fact that there have been some paid by West End Sofa and they were not a settlement agreement at all. Okay. Um, the next one was your poll, Martina. You weren't here. <coughs> And they wanted um, some clarification. Um, but we have it on the agenda tonight for you to go over your goals. So I, I think you um, probably advised them. Let's see. You know, clarify six. Closer to the same mission. Okay, that's what it was. And then, um, are they going to be. Um, Limited, or are we going to expand it to like other people, like for example, speech therapists, psychologists, or just our IT teacher? No, everybody that has to deal with special education. So special educators in the right. And over and above what parents are doing to the art and writing and celebration, I guess annually your history tradition has been to get to something that we would vote on or as each board member we can just say we would like to recognize a you as the upland representative you know you're an upland i'm not you you know you deal with a lot of parents and and maybe the parents say oh you know what so and so is an awesome ot well give her a certificate of recognition i mean just to say thank you for doing a great job okay so during the course in between the meetings, we would hopefully get that sort of feedback and then request maybe Karen to give us a certificate and we would just present that here. Right. And then so forward that. Like, we would invite them here. Well, see, I didn't want to, like, I didn't want them to, you know, because uh, some, you know, sometimes it's hard for them to come here because mm -hmm. they're, they have kids and they, they might not live in the area, just to give it to maybe mm -hmm. even the director of special education to give it to that mm -hmm. person. You know, the yes. best time to give it to them is at a board meeting, to recognize them at a board meeting. Mm -hmm. A lot of the teachers, a lot of the classified employees, they really like that recognition. That's a nice idea. You know? Yeah, and it, it, it is a great idea. I just, you know, my, you know, because some teachers don't even live in the area, so they would have to come back at 7 o'clock. <coughs> but we're, whenever you want to recognize them, I mean, just, 
Well, you take it upon you yourself to anybody say thank you. you want to recognize, or does it, people have to vote that they deserve if recognition if from us? If it's from the CAC, would you want a process where the, you know who they're intending to, and then we can have a list here even in the packet of who's being recognized, and then it can be formally done at the board meeting? Yeah, that, if that's, I mean, I just, you just yeah. want to make sure we have an avenue right. of, or yeah, kind of think about. Yeah, and I want it like throughout the year, not necessarily at the, you know, at the art and writing, just throughout the year, like thank you for doing such a great job. Because well, they need to be recognized at their own personal school assembly, right. or something like that. Yeah, right. Just whatever. Can, but can we yeah, put them out here, here too? Right. At, yeah, the, at our meeting. Just announce their names. Yeah, announce their names. Yeah, announce their names. Through the year, right? At least six. At least, oh, at least. So we can add. add. You could add. add. Because there are some awesome teachers out there. There's some awesome OT, speech and language. I mean, there's awesome people out there. When we ask the school district, you know, to nominate, to let us know, if we would provide the, the certificate, and then they could do it in whatever form. Uh, they felt was the, the best to recognize them. Right. Mm -hmm. But I think here that, that we, as, we are uh, recognizing specific ones, right, is what you're thinking? Right. Yeah, each, each member recognize, you know, your own district, your own personnel. Just um, as a result of our speaking with other parents, right. like, you know, so-and-so really has helped me. Right. Okay. <coughs> or like what Bruce Russell said, maybe yeah. if we can send it out to our directors, they can send it out and people can respond to them and then they can let us know. But it's, it, it could still come right. from us, though, yeah. officially. We could still announce it here, who got it, from what district, that they were recognized by their board or they were recognized at an assembly. So it goes in our minutes. We recognize them publicly. We give them the certificate. We, we let the school district decide you know, how they pick them and, and let us know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm, I'm really all for recognition, both recognizing students and recognizing people. It, it, it makes a difference. I mean, you know, if, if our bosses or whoever they are say, hey, you know, you're doing a good job, we, we recognize you, it, it makes a difference. Yes, it does. I know I kept all mine. <laughs> you know, it, does. it does. I think it makes you feel good. That's true. That's true. I have a suggestion from our team, and maybe you might want to have one of your subcommittees meet and formalize the process and bring it back next time. Sitting for parents that come to CAC meetings. If it were held here? Um, yes. But we'd have to know ahead of time and all that. And I'll, I'll ask again regarding that. Okay. Why don't you bring information to our next meeting? Okay. But it would only be for the Ontario Montclair School District. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the parents, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
So it would be up to each school district. Makes sense from the board. Yeah, liability. Yeah. liability. Yeah. I think that might make it too complicated. I mean, staff crossing, it would be hard not to have them in the same rooms. And mm -hmm. that would mm -hmm. just look right, and so even if, our, even if individual districts, uh, you know, sort of accommodated in the same fashion, you still have to have each room because you couldn't let the kids mix and the kind of mix around yeah. Unless they just provided a place in Ontario Montclair and people can drop their children off there and come over here for a meeting and then pick them up. It could still be Ontario Montclair kids, right? Yeah. And parents. Yeah. Wouldn't they and I, would, I think as, as a group, I would hate for just one right. organization to provide it and not the other. Right. I think we need to get the buy in for each of the school districts. I, I don't think we want to do something just because it works for one that doesn't right. work for the other. You know what I mean? It just why do you think there's something to keep exploring? So, so would the action be for each of us to go back and look at that? Or only I'm sorry. I don't think so. I wonder if it's just something we can put on our next, um, um, what's that thing that we send out? Survey. Would you be more inclined to come mm -hmm. if there were babysitting? Well, I don't know if you want to but get that information because yeah. if you can't provide right. it, then there's no point, right? I mean, Up to no point it's about it. Could you get back to us about the liability of a third third party entity coming in doing the babysitting, like a church? Because I know a friend of mine, you know, she's a Jehovah Witness, and I know that's part of their thing that they actually do do when assistance is needed. They do things like that. <coughs> Um, the Corona Norco CELPA for their CAC meetings, they have child care available, so maybe contacting the CELPA administrator at Corona Norco, they might be able to tell you how they do that and go about doing that. Although the surveys might be a good idea to see how much of an interest there is, that, that we might be able to gain, you know, It was last year. It started in March, right? Actually, it wasn't actually. It was last year. 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 I think it's pretty difficult, though, for every school district to be responsible for their own, for, kids. For their own kids. You're talking about insurance, you're yeah. talking about, and it, it, if you do a survey, are you going to have yeses? Of course. I mean, of course we'd say, yeah, sure, provide babysitting, but I think it's but kind of, reality? yeah, I think if the CELPA can do it, I mean, if it's legitimate, and they can do it, if, if it's being done, look into it. But I think for each district, for us to ask each district, I, you know, I think it's it's pretty I think difficult. It's not I think Christy had a great idea. If Corona Norco does it, then let's just see what they did to get that. Yeah. Yeah. I think they do it through their aides, but we don't have aides here at Selfa. The one to one aid. Our Selfa doesn't have one.
we just did with the independence <coughs> this week. Um, so basically, I just wanted to give you an update on some things that are going on across the SELPA and all of our different departments. We um, have started our second cohort, oh, third cohort, for the autism program, the added authorization for autism spectrum disorders. And you can see of the 53 participants, which district, am I blocking you, but it's okay. Um, so you can see the different districts and how many participants we have. Also, we have a new program specialist who has joined the SEPA, uh, Peter Mercado, from um, Etiwanda School District. And then that necessitated some assignment changes to all the different districts have been notified if there's a change at all. Peter comes to us with a lot of great skills. He'll be serving OMSD mostly. Um, he um, speaks Spanish fluently and is has been a school psychologist. We're very happy about having Peter join us. And then the program specialists are um, doing a lot of training this year in their group on alternative dispute resolution, which is really helpful because when they go to IEP meetings, they're looking at how can they resolve anything before it would move on to a higher level. Um, across the SAFO, we have some very good news. All districts have met MOE, and that has a lot to do with <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was <laughs> I said, she's famous. <laughs> I thought you meant all districts met MOE. She's like the <laughs> um, it's all about you. <laughs> of effort, and that is huge in the special ed world because if we do not meet maintenance of effort, then we cannot spend our federal funding, and that would be huge and would have a huge impact on us. And so there's a calculation that we do to see if um, we have met that. What that means is every year from our general fund, we have to spend at least as much as we did the prior year. If we didn't, there are a few things we can look at. For example, if we had uh, staff with a higher salary that have retired or moved elsewhere, if we have students who um, have more costs attached to serving them and they've either maxed out on age or they come back to a district placement or whatever, and um, if there's some facilities costs that we've been paying for and those have discontinued, we can use those as exceptions and reduce what our maintenance of effort would be. So the good news is all of the districts met maintenance of effort. And they probably met most. <laughs> <laughs> we have a committee looking at growth and decline, and these are the, the dates that this particular work group will be meeting. And what's really huge about this, I'll give you an example, we have a district who was notified that a charter school will be leaving them next year. We're funded on average daily attendance, not how many special ed students we have. And so when you get a notification that you have a thousand students leaving next year, that significantly impacts your special ed funding. It impacts self funding. It impacts a lot of things across the board. Well, at the self level, statewide, we're looking at this too, because for years, if we have a student that moves away, they take funding away at $644 per student. If we have growth, they give us money at $465 per student. So if you do the math, that's $179 difference. And so the state is actually coming out $300 million head on the deal because um, you would think the students would go somewhere else, right? And so we feel that it should, at the very least, be reduced to the amount that they take away to equal the amount of growth. So there will be more coming on that, but this committee is looking at what's happening to us locally. Um, program transfer process, we have a self-policy where a district can request to transfer a program from the county or from the self and we have a whole timeline in our local plan. So um, this is what is happening currently in that process. Backpack and superintendents have the opportunity to ask any questions at the governance meeting in November, and um, then in the packet that they all received, the program transfer requests were included. <coughs> um, we have a contract that's in the works that um, we have some work that will be done by February 28th to help us with some fiscal issues. Um, 
And then there's an amount of funding, about $3 million in California, that's set aside for what we call extraordinary costs. And if the cost to place a student in a special placement exceeds $73,000, we can put in to get some money back. Um, and so that has to be submitted by November 30th. Community Advisory Committee, I included everybody. October 9th, we had a Special Ed 101 training. I wish you all could have been here that night. We had 40 parents attending the training. I was hoping we would get as many for our inside bullying tonight. Um, provide the basic information about the IEP process, meeting and form, and we had lots of great questions and discussion. And kudos to Edith because she stepped right in and translated. We really appreciated that. And then tonight, of course, as you know, Jan is going to be presenting about anti-bullying. Uh, mental health, we had Sarah Sutherland from BWK present on homeless and foster youth, residency and educational rights and responsibilities, and also providing educationally related mental health services, where are we now? And then we have a new referral process if one of the districts wants to utilize our um, counseling services. On October 26th, F3 had a training on earnings and eligibility that was presented in a very systematic and sequential manner, which was very helpful. And then our clinical counselors participated in a training on November 1st. Some trainers came from Placer, California, and trained on eliminating barriers to learning, which has to do with mental health issues and, and what we can do to eliminate the barriers many of these students have to actually benefiting from their education. Um, we have a, a work group that's been meeting to look at our um, full continuum of service options, the supervision of the clinical counselors, staff, and to develop recommendations for future distribution. Um, this year we receive, if, if it all works out, as we think about 2.7 to 2.8 million additional dollars compared to what we had last year, we want to really use that funding to maximize the difference we make for students mental health needs. And then Dave Romo, one of our counselors, is being honored tomorrow um, by Western Family Counseling Intervention. I think some of the data about our mental health services is, is very interesting and helps us to make informed decisions. If you look at the number of referrals that we've had over the last five years, <coughs> you have to remember that the services being provided by Department of Behavioral Health for many years, and then all of a sudden, in 2010, as you all recall, Governor Schwarzenegger decided that the schools would now be providing those services. So that enters into this too, but in 708, we had 150 uh, referrals. That was long before that shift. And then you can see it has just increased significantly each and every year to where in 11 to 12, we had 307 referrals. And on September 30th, we got a tax this year. Um, if you look at the referrals by district, um, you can see, of course, the districts with more ABA are more likely to have more referrals. But again, um, last year and this year up to September. <coughs> Number of referrals received monthly. The trend is, of course, that from um, February through May, we have a huge increase typically in the number of referrals. People are looking forward to next year and looking to see if students need to have additional services. Um, the number of students receiving services as of September 30th was 342 that are being provided by the staff. I have to um, share that with you. OMSD, Chino and one other district also have Chasey have um, some counseling programs that they're providing in addition to what we're providing. And this is strictly the services being provided by our counselors. We also have a number of students in residential placement who um, they've placed out of state or in state receiving mental health services. This is the one that surprised me the most. Ninety-five of the students receiving counseling services by our counselors are female, 249 are male. I just thought that was interesting. We 
also have a vocational team. That's our workability team and our TGP team. And we have transition partnership programs. We have a grant with the Department of Rehab. And um, on October 22nd, they came to conduct an on-site review. And at that time, they determined it's been a number of years since we have expanded our program. And we have a point where we're providing the community services that it's time for us to expand the program. So on November 19th, I'll be meeting with the Department of Rehab for an amendment and augmentation of the contract. Collaboration with other agencies. On October 23rd, I met with California Children's Services. Um, I don't know if you remember, but last year it was looking like Governor Brown was going to shift all of the OT services provided by CCS over to the schools, but with no additional funding to come along with it. So I met with them to um, talk about that, to see if they knew anything, because we think it was just averted temporarily. They haven't heard anything else. And then um, I made an, uh, an appointment to go see one of the MTUs, so I'll be doing that in the next month. And then we had a follow-up to the private school meeting held September 26th. Out of that meeting, one of the questions, well, let me step back. Private school meeting. We have to meet once a year, invite all the private schools to come talk about the proportionate share of federal funding because the law says that we have to look at how much federal funding we have, how many students are in private schools, and a proportionate share of our funding has to go to provide service, <coughs> service plans, not IEPs. And um, the question came up, um, if we were providing speech services a certain way. And so we have since clarified that and notified each of the districts how many kids they have on service plans for speech and they are now providing if there's a service plan for speech. I have questions. <coughs> um, on the program transfer policy, can we put something in place that really guarantees a reassurance that the, that the school district that's taking back the, the children can really provide the service instead of just being a, a yes and no vote? Um, there's a whole process mode that they have to go through that they have submitted forms to my office, and I'll be talking more about that at the superintendent's meeting on Friday, that they have to address all sorts of things. Have they looked at fiscal ramifications? But have nobody they... physically goes and looks and then goes and looks at the site that they're going to bring back the, the child or the children to, to reassure that they really can meet those children's needs. And it just seems like it's a yes and no thing and nobody's physically making sure, looking at that program, then looking at the program of the, of the school district that's taking back the kids. Why pull them when you know you're gonna end up putting them, some of them back? It's, it's just right. wrong. And, and it's not that, they may take a program, but that doesn't mean they're taking over the student that's right. in the program. Because if a student within that program still needs a program offered by the county, but I, just, I just think if it's not just always paperwork and you have something in place where somebody physically goes to the county and say they're taking um, a, a, a class back, okay, and the majority of them is, is say, a school district, one school district in particular, that they can really meet the needs of all those kids, that they talk to the teacher because little Jane might have extreme circumstances and can't <coughs> handle going back, and, and that's not done, and then they end up going back to county. Right. So that's what I was trying to share, is that they may say, as we move forward and mm -hmm. children need this program, we're going to be looking because we're transferring this program to our district. Let's pick, like, um, mild to moderate preschoolers through second grade, mm -hmm. okay? Maybe the kids have been in a preschool program for the county, and then when it comes time go into K-12, parents might feel more comfortable with the county because that's where they've always been in the district mm -hmm. can very well provide that service. But <coughs> if they come to the IEP meeting for each student, they'll be saying, which is more appropriate for this individual stu student? We have these options and maybe something else too. But it never means that every child is automatically slated for the district. It's totally an IEP team decision. 
and they will have to look at every IEP. They can't just automatically <coughs> say without holding an IEP meeting that the student's going I know, but it's past practice that they convince the parents. There's very few parents that will go into an IEP meeting and say no. They think this is the only thing that they can do because the program is closing, the teacher's going, they're reassigning the classrooms, whatever. So the parents feel that that's the only option that they have, but yet, you know, some of those kids can't do it. And then sometimes the school district finds out that, you know, they didn't have the means to do it and the kids never make it over there, they didn't have another IEP or an addendum IEP, and they end up in the county. When you go through all that, it seems like it would be better that before you even start the IEP process, that some, there's there's some kind of a reassurance that there's physically somebody going into that program, looking, talking to the teachers, see what those kids need, and see if that district can really provide all those services. And if they can't, then like say they can for ten children, but not two. You don't even consider those two children. Have you had a talk with your director about? Um, no, this is, I mean, school, you know, all school district-wide. I, 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 second, I second Lauren because, in fact, this is what, how I started out in, in the whole thing, because uh, in 2000, when Chima Valley was taking back their kids, and it, this is exactly and, and what... And they can't, what, they uh, what, can't provide it. What we, but what it also, I think it's important then, is to get parents more, to understand more. Part of the process, it's spelled right out important. in there, is... Um, I just think there's a key component missing, okay. you know, that, you know, nobody physically goes down, checks out what the county has to offer versus the um, school district, you know. Okay. And it's kind of the same when the school district says that they can't you know, provide for this child automatically goes to the <coughs> county, but sometimes, you know, the school district can provide it, they just don't want to provide certain services, and I really think a third party needs to be there, like a self program specialist needs to be there and say, well, no, if you provide this, you know, this is the least restrictive environment, just provide this extra service if it's needed, and the child doesn't have to go to county or go to a non-public school. It seems like there's, there's this huge step in the same. You know, and it's a physical one where uh, there's a body missing. It's always paperwork. You know, it's best to be done in person sometimes. Would you like to have the program transfer on the agenda next time and maybe talk to everybody else mm -hmm. that really includes? And then one other thing, if you could um, contact, um, get in contact with the Inland Regional Center, I think there was a key component always missing within the SELPA where the SELPA did not know where all the group homes are within the SELPA's um, arm reach. And they're supposed to know, because I've been getting in involved with a lot of cases where children have to go to um, group homes, and they are regional center clients. So adult group homes? Uh, no, children. And nobody seems to know where these group homes are, and there is an agreement with the SELPA and the regional center that you know, you guys are supposed to be speaking, you're supposed to know where they are. Actually, and I know you're new here. <coughs> funding, part of our funding is based on a list that we get right off of the CD website. So hopefully that's current, but it would be a good idea to just check with us. Usually it's um, Department of Social Services that has that list, not regional center. No, regional center. Regional center is in control of placing those children when they're on safe in their home. No, but, but it's Department of Social Services that licenses them. Yes, but Inland Regional Center has the names of the group homes, and SELPA is that knows that you know a regional center client is allowed access to that group home because I was also running into that problem where you know I was being told that you know the the child cannot be placed in that group home because it's not within in the regional center when in fact it was. Why don't we put that up there too? The group home list and just get a report back in terms of who has the list and How what they're going to do there. with it. And, okay. you know. And you, yeah, I have a question. You mentioned the <coughs> program specialist 
Spanish speaking and that it will be primarily working with uh, OMST. But will we as Chafee, because we have Ontario High School and Chafee, a lot of Spanish speaking families, I don't see it happening in a lot because every high school has a, a team. But right. will we also have access to that program? Are at least our parents have Spanish too. Mm -hmm. um, and, and do all of you and I don't know if that it is passed, but I don't have it all memorized, I'm sorry. But um, I will check and see what Amy has. Okay. Um, the chairperson's report. Thank you. Um, I had a goal to uh, increase participation of parents, increase the participation of team of parents and educators in CAC business meetings and presentations. And I put measured by 50% by the end of the school year. I think we should I think we should add 101 because we have 40 plus people uh, coming. Done on. We're not done yet. Okay, that was a great turnout. 40, person, 40 parents showed up, and I and it wasn't just OMSD. It was all all the districts. I think we did a wonderful job. I know this time we might not have that many in the audience. But um, but it's 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 a positive. Yeah, it's positive. And we feel like we would be doing this too. Yes. They know we're getting the word out there. You know? Right. And then the second thing I had was uh, you know to give recognition to educational specialists. And I said educational specialists because I wanted to include the OT speech and language. Anybody that comes in contact with special education and. Um, and like Susan said, we might, you know, we bring bring it back to the committee meeting and discuss, like, how we're going to present it to them, who's going to present it to them, and maybe the superintendent is going to present it to them. You know, it just uh, whatever's easier for the district. But I do want the the personnel to, you know, to know how much we appreciate their hard work because there's a lot of, like I said, a lot of teachers, a lot of uh, OTs, speech and language. Yeah. Physical therapists, yeah. yeah, resource specialists that do an awesome job, and I just want them uh, to, you know, know that we're that we want to say thank you. Absolutely. And so we will bring that forward to uh, a committee to finalize the process. And I don't have. Any scripts for public comments? Uh -oh. I nice. Oh, no. That's not kidding. No, no, no. It's a paper. Do you want to just speak? Yeah. Yes, um, I want to go ahead and thank you for stepping up and translating for the parents. Um, like, sorry, I just, sorry. I just want to get a record. Laura Martinez. <laughs> Um, and I also wanted to um, ask about, I know we didn't have the, the translate um, presentation into Spanish. Um, I don't know if the parents did contact the, the SOPA to get those forms translated, but um, are they confused of how the process works of how to get those documentations in their language? Like today, they wanted to come, but they were, you know, they, they didn't know if translation was going to be offered, um, and they didn't know if the, the information was going to be translated. So I just want to want to see if at all it's going to be, in, you know, how, how to clarify the process of how to obtain that documentation and how they get the translated. Translated. Can we put on that that um, the sub director will look into hiring a translator? We've always wondered. Mm -hmm. The public has always wondered about that. Why stuff with a translator? A translator that translates written and verbally. I, to me, I can't comprehend the self being this big, and you guys had nobody all these years to translate. You guys always used old MSD. Mm -hmm. Well, most likely, then we paid for whatever we had translated. No, no, no. There was a lot of times that you know there was no. Well, John, if you, I mean, uh, Sharon, if you want to put up there. Um, possibility of translator, then we can look into it. Oh, what's in self of differing in a translator maybe once or twice? I know one time she had an asthma attack and she had to oh, leave for CZ. 
and she had an asthma attack. But I think oh. you were talking about something broader. Yes. No, I, I really think that this sofa is so big that it's just very hard for me as, as a parent and as a school board mm -hmm. member of Ole Miss e that there has never been a translator ever. I mean, it just really amazes me. And nobody's willing in the SELFA to even do it, even if, you know, we suggested um, doing a, um, it's where they get a, a stipend. But I guess apparently, supposedly, nobody in SELFA was interested in that. So just to clarify one more time, you're talking about it's for the purposes of CAC? Not just CAC. Okay, that's what I thought. Yeah. Because it mean, take a lot more than a stipend. I, I'm sure that yeah. you guys have um, mediation meetings where the parents are Spanish speaking. I mean, I have to wonder, you know, gosh, how is that being done? You know? I'm sure in those cases, the district probably bring the Spanish Yeah, staff. they do. Mm -hmm. A translator is always provided at every IEP case. Every yeah, request. Mm -hmm. Every request. Yeah. Yeah. Or even sometimes I've gone to IEPs where it's a Spanish speaking mom and she said, no, I don't need a translator. Mm -hmm. But the district thought she really did. And they brought one anyways just in case. Mm -hmm. yeah. I have had also where I've also got as a parent. <coughs> with the parent, you know, to help mm -hmm. and so on. And they still have a translator, even though I've been a translator for, you know, about five years. And, and there again, we probably need to clarify in SELPA versus districts, but... Well, it's just I like, are the, like the this. This is not translated in Spanish. You know, I, as a parent in OMSD, I fought for all this stuff to be translated. When I became a board member, I continued. We have a great superintendent. He saw that there's a need. He wants to make sure that the community, the parents are, are involved. They can't be involved if they can't read the stuff. There is nobody that is Spanish speaking that I know that can read this. You know, and some of them, honestly, I know one mom in particular, she goes to our board meetings, she sits in the back, you know, and it would be great if this was all translated in, in, in Spanish, not just interpreted during the, the board meeting. You know, it'd be a great thing for me for self and never ever to have somebody being able to do that or take your presentation that you did and translate it in Spanish also so it's on one wall where you're, you know, it just amazes me that that's never been done. I think we would get more parents here. Okay, so we'll take that into consideration. Um, we're going to go to business items and it's E1, a CAC public and private agency representative. <coughs> and, um, I did not call an executive committee meeting. I do apologize. I've been working 10 hour shifts because of Hurricane e. Sandy, and I'm still going to be working Saturday and Sunday. 10 hour so shifts. The update, we're, we're getting to it. Uh, so um, I don't know if you guys want, I, do I have a motion to accept it or to table it? To do what? Accept what? Uh, the business items number one CEC public and private agency representative because we haven't met. So. It would seem to me you need to call a meeting mm -hmm. when you can, right? And you need to go through that process of reviewing and calling the people in the review and then coming back with a recommendation of who the committee is moving forward. That's correct. So I just say that we'll come back with a recommendation next meeting. Next meeting. We'll follow the meeting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can I have a motion to table it? Table it for our next business meeting. Do we need a motion for that? We need a motion to table. Is that mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We said. So, motion to table. Motion to table. I'll second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh -huh. All those opposed say no. Motion carries. Uh, then number two, uh, 2013 State Legislative Day. Uh, the Superintendent's Council has approved sending two CEC members to SELPA Legislative Sharing Day. Um, approval granted specifically for CEC chairperson and standing committee chair for the legislative committee. And I need a motion to accept. Actually, that should just be information. Yeah, it's yeah. just, it's over here. Yeah. But it's a business yeah, item, so. Okay, I second. Who first? Who <laughs> I first. Okay. Okay. You're first to accept. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say no. Motion carries. And then the third one is standing committee versus ad hoc committees. In September 2012 meeting, the CEC members requested that this item be included in the November agenda. The CEC body
bylaws indicate that the chair has the discretion to decide if the work will be done via ad hoc committees or standing committees. The group will discuss their preference and the chair will respond with her decision. Would, will there be a vote on this? It's an action item. Okay, so you either so vote it down or you vote. Oh, okay. I just didn't know. Okay. <laughs> but uh, the group has to um, discuss their preference. I think we've had so much trouble in organizing and scheduling the standing committee <coughs> for some of the things that we're doing. I, I'd, be, um, I'd be okay with that. Uh, being, uh, well, it's just, it's just like the, the item that we discussed a little bit ago, uh, you know, honoring people. To have a big committee meeting that we have to post and all this to do a process. You know, for example, I'd like to ask the superintendent's council. I mean, if I was, you know, how would you like to do it? And then we'll do it. We'll provide the the uh, <clears throat> the facility to honor them here. We'll get the certificates for them. I, but I'm not going to call a meeting. Call a meeting to, to and, and post it, whatever, and all that to do that. Yeah, uh, you I know, agree. I'm I'm not going to if I was on that. So it's done. those get, kinds get, of things that there sh needs to be, to me, a simpler process. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's going to come back to this committee. Nothing's going to be done unless it comes back to this committee where, it, you know, where there is uh, input. But I, I agree, and as we are doing more, which is great, we're getting busier, you know, it's, it's we're going to have more meetings, you know, more committees, more meetings. I just think it would we would be losing time instead of gaining, using that time valuably, you know, in a valuable way, as to, you know, uh, doing it so formal. Uh, and again, it's, nothing's going to pass. Exactly. That's until we bring it to the, to the CEC. I, I, I agree with that. I, I think Can I make a motion that we accept ad hoc meetings? Second. Actually, the way the bylaws are written, mm -hmm. that's your, your chair mm -hmm. to make that terrible oh. So I, I think that's why it's worded. That you, you have this opportunity to do your because she wasn't here when you all were having this discussion in September. And then ultimately, the way our bylaws were written is first. Yeah, and I did not write the bylaws. It was the person before you came around. And, um, yeah, life would be so easy if it was like that, but uh, according to the Brown Act, I, I do fear it only because I want to be transparent to the taxpayers. And and I know right now, you know, the audience is small, but uh, imagine asking 40 parents, uh, would you like to be a, you, would you like to see where, the, where your money is going to? And I would really, would not like to exclude parents. I would not like to exclude anybody from showing up to a standing committee meeting. And I, I do have a problem with ad hoc committees because, um, because I just want to be transparent. I honestly want to be transparent. I don't want anybody uh, t saying that I was doing something that I shouldn't be doing. And that's just the way I feel. But can't we be transparent here? I mean, have do all the legwork, work, the, the work, the prelim work, and then bring that here and this is where that transparency will be. I agree with you. I mean, you know, this is, yeah, we, can, we have an opportunity for our public to comment on what's the agenda. We can discuss that. Uh, but all the legwork and preliminary work can be done before, wouldn't you think? And it just, because it has been very difficult. It has and I just, us, I think, you know, it, that's a great it, word. It truly has. And, and, We'll but that's that just we're not doing anything that isn't transparent. Right. We're just doing the work, and then we're presenting what this we've done, and you can accept it or deny it, and the public has a chance to talk about it. I like or I don't like. At that time, nothing's trying to be hidden. It's trying. We're just trying to get work done. Yeah. What I'm hearing is you have a committee of people that are very, very much wanting to move the work forward, right. but they all have very busy lives, and so if they could come together. And do some brainstorming and do some planning and bring it back for a decision. 
that they could get the work done and they could sell coffers because they're all volunteering a lot of time for what they're doing here. And, and they're not here just to fill a seat, but because they really want to get something done and get something forward. Can't decide on their own, so everybody comes and votes. But um, I, I just want you to listen right. to your committee too right. because those are your work reviews. Right. Right. Couldn't it be also that we can give it a try? Because obviously I think our work is going very well. You know, there is uh, our meetings, we're getting things done. I mean, it's nothing is permanent. And so things could be, we can try it. Yes. 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 And that's why we have our standing committees. And uh, although I know it's hard to schedule them, and I understand everybody has different work schedules, we all have different duties to uh, <coughs> But I honestly, um, I will, I personally will not participate in an ad hoc committee. I don't want my code of ethics to be in question, and I won't do it. I'm so sorry. Wait, 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 now, wait. now you're putting that back, that questioning our code of ethics. No, I mean, no, I took that as a My, my so, recommendation I mean, would be that we move on because yeah. at this point, yeah. it's the chair's decision. And until that changes, I would say we move on. I have a yeah, question. The only, thing, I mean, the only thing I would suggest that we might look at it item by item. And for example, uh, if the item on honoring people could be done, you know, and that's your decision at this point, then we move on. If it can't, if you don't agree, then that's fine. And probably we won't get it done because we're probably not going to go through that, but that's that's okay too. But there's a couple of other huge projects you have this year that um, finalizing the survey results mm -hmm. and planning the major events like the arts and writing workshops or whatever that's called. And writing class. Also, um, the difference between a standing committee and an ad hoc committee is a standing committee is usually an ongoing committee. Mm -hmm. So, out of have work all four, I mean, out of all four committees, I mean, do all of them have to be a standing committee? They've got specific work to do when that's done, that they're done. Yes. It's not like they have to meet. That's what I'm, I'm saying. Or anything else so maybe you can justify why it needs to be a standing committee. I mean, how many times are we going to meet a year on these committees? And, and why is it necessary? Because that's what makes the difference between an ad hoc and a standing committee. Mm -hmm. Like an ad hoc committee could be something that throws you to have worked so hard in tabulating the surveys. And, and you know, work with a small group of people or just you and with her the or the parent the president, president, so that right. we can just come up with a list. With a list of the, you know, like the top. I thought that's what I was going to do today. <laughs> yes, you are. Yeah, but that's an, yeah, that is an ad hoc. And something like uh, we're going to go ahead and do a presentation, do an ad hoc, just for that presentation by only nothing else. So yes, we can. So I think you're going to have to, because it's sounding kind of gray here, yes. in terms of where you're going with what, I think you're going to have to clearly communicate with and have to record it what you've determined is with ad hoc, what you've determined is standing. So what standing committee is, is the standing committee that we already have, that we already have chairpersons for. Mm -hmm. For the presentation next year, <coughs> there could be an ad hoc meeting to discuss the what the topic is going to be about. I have to be about the standing because I think there is a standing committee for that, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Right. There are yeah. So an ad hoc meeting. Oh, this one. Oh, and then that. So, for instance, could there be an ad hoc no, meeting for, for an ad hoc committee for? I know. Can you just go down the list? Like yeah. Can you go down the list, start with the public information and membership committee and explain to them why it has to be a standing committee, how many times that they're probably going to have to meet and why it entitles to be. That's what I was asking. I'm not sure where you guys are all going. <laughs> well, where, where I'm going is we do it by topic. In other words, when we come up with something that we want to move on and want to move right away and want to brought back here, for example, honoring people. 
Secondly, tabulating the results. Right. Okay, those two to me, get a group together and do it. And we don't have to have it open to the world. It's going to come back here. Oh, I just fell. But anyway, uh, so we do it topic by topic because if we try to, and then everything else at this point goes to one of the standing committees. Okay, so uh, right now we're going to have to go ahead and table it, and we're going to decide what, what could be an ad hoc one. And we already have the standing committees here. It's just, like uh, Russ has said, like when she went ahead and tabulated all the surveys in the top five uh, things that we're going to, might, we might be presenting on in the next presentation. Can we, since you have all the decision making right now, do you think that as issues come up, we can decide if that will be an ad hoc to go to a committee? Like right now, we have the little issue of the certificates. Can you just make a decision now that that will go to a committee or that can be a ad hoc? Can we do it that way? Just rather than having to try to figure out where things will go in advance before they come up? Yeah, but for the sake of time, uh, we will go ahead and table this. If you, I do have a motion to table it. What do we do? The standing committee versus ad hoc. And I'll go ahead and I move that we table. Well, would you consider um, providing some information, as Mo suggests, going down those four um, current standing committees and... For the sake of... No, I understand that, but for, uh, during the... At, at, you know, at when you address it again. Right, when I address it again. Would you yes. consider... She wouldn't be able to, because she can't doesn't know what the issues are going to be that come up. I mean, but something stand, but standard... But they fit in somewhere. No, no, no. I'm talking things. about the four committees that we already have. I know. Like the she local plan review. Here. You know, that's obvious. That would probably yes. have to be a standing, standing committee. Well, okay, because that's an ongoing issue. Legislation. Right. Of course, plan. that is obvious. Yeah. But something right. like... But I mean, like the other ones, is, you know... No, no, we're not. You're getting confused. We're not talking about the certificates. We're talking about just the four committees. That's what's on there. That's what we're talking about. So you guys are all getting confused, and that's why I'm like this now. It, it's confusing. So we need a second. Yeah. So we'll set back the table. Second the table. Who did, who's going to make it? Um, if I, I make the motion. I will second it. Uh, parent survey, uh, we were going to... Did, that, did we carry the name? Oh, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say no. Motion carries. Rose, could you please give us the results of the parent survey, please? Okay. <coughs> um, well, there were a lot of areas that parents wanted to um, see training on. Some were just hungry for any training. <laughs> Others uh, wanted to find out what was available. Um, but the top three would <coughs> be um, how to help their students with homework, how to become successful, whether you know whether it was reading, math, um, some of the things that they could do at home for um, you know strategies um, for speech, kind of some of the, some exercises they can do with speech. I mean, there was a whole. So the second one, the first one is. No, I guess I have that as one. I'm okay. sorry. Okay. <laughs> I was trying to, again, um, I think the top one was homework. And what fell under that is, you know, sometimes they were uh, specific and talked about math, algebra, reading, improving comprehension. Um, also, what they can do to improve their child's language skills. You know, there were a lot of specifics, and so I don't know how much... But that's one category. Um, another um, had to do with transition. Um, you know, what to do once a child ages out. Uh, what options are there for their child as far as college. Um, you know, the opportunities also improving uh, transition plans, you know, workability and more information on workability and um, getting them uh, jobs after uh, high school, and um, so that is uh, a concern parents have. And I know the life after high school, we had talked about, you know, we do that every year, but I think every year it is a huge issue to parents because they've now reached that phase. And so I think we need to continue to, well, that's my 
suggestion and what I saw with the um, surveys. And I'm sorry, I kind of I'm flipping through pieces of paper and forget where I'm at. Um, behavior management. That was number three. Well, you know, I'm sorry. Actually, that was uh, number two. I went out of order. Behavior management was number two. Transition. Yes. And it was just as, you know, broad as, you know, behavioral, how to deal with behavioral issues, techniques, um, in addressing behavior. There was dealing with emotions, aggressiveness as they become older. And there's just a whole realm of things. And a lot of that, you know, can be addressed through the parenting class, but unfortunately that's a 10 week class. And, you know, um, not everyone has the opportunity to spend that much time. So coming up with, you know, some some techniques and how to deal with maybe a child that's out of control or certain behaviors that uh, just need to be uh, addressed. And I've got a lot of specifics and I have five um, district so that um, districts are interested if they want to do something within the district that's available. Uh, but those are your top three topics and how specific, how far um, down you want to go into those. And there's a lot of specific questions and comments that uh, parents have made. And I would say about 20%, uh, um, 15 to 20% of the surveys we received had comments, you know, had specific training um, topics. And I only got through half of the surveys. Oh my goodness. <laughs> a lot of information, but a lot of good information. <coughs> Rose, you did it for all of the districts? No, oh. no, like um, Ontario and Clara had done there, so it was just a matter of reviewing their oh, information and kind of categorizing them, okay. uh, pulling them together. Um, I did uh, just pull an aspect out of half of Chino's responses. Um, uh, it brought up one, that's mine, and again, um, Ed Wanda, I just did the same thing. I just pulled out a piece, the, the training piece. Wow. Uh, or, you know, they had less than 100. Um, JP did their own. Uh, um, there were a couple districts that didn't have any survey results. So that's, uh, Great job. Updating you that you're still in compiling That was a long time. Well, that's a question. For example, one at the moment. <laughs> but no, I'm thinking, for example, Chino, um, I think we had divided that, but I don't, I didn't follow up on how the other half was going. And so um, I, can, I can do those. I mean, but it'll take, uh, take a little while. And I only, and for Chino, I only looked at a couple of things. I looked at, um, you know, the best way to communicate to parents. Um, what they'd like their district to do, and then the trainings. I didn't do all the other stuff, but I figured. And I think so at one point I was a person when I met, I came up with number five. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, we don't need to vote on this. This was just to discuss yeah, the, the, the But it was to move forward for the okay, parent presentation. Which will be coming up in February. Right. Mm -hmm. We really need to move on that one. It's gonna, well, if those were the top three, homework, behavior, and transition, do we want to see if we can get a presentation on one of those three? Mm -hmm. yeah. We already do our life out of high school, so maybe right. we don't do that. Right. So maybe we try to do homework or behavior. Behavior. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, behavior. And behavior. Yeah. I know for my district, behavior was a big one. Mm -hmm. and transition. Raise your hand, whoever wants behavior. I just, I just saw the board. Like, Raise your hand if you want homework. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Well, the thing is, with behavior, it's been my experience. Why go That's a good point. That's, That's where you were going with it. It a long with time to yeah. correct the behavior. Yeah. Behaviors because the homework is something yeah. you yeah. might want to do. Well, we, can, we, we have February, and then we might have April or some another. What April was the like Let yeah. go to high school. But so February is the entire thing of the presentation, um, right? So it's a lot of stuff. 
Life after high school is going to be a little bit different this year. Um, <coughs> there's an inland inspired group that has mm -hmm. contacted our SAPA to um, work together in inland empire, so it's going to be headed up by inland empire this year and be offered on a much larger So I'd like to make a motion to accept a homework, no, behavior, behavior. Okay, okay. okay. my Sharon. motion is Sharon. Motion is it, who seconded? I second. Uh, hold on. Uh, second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. Motion carries. Motion to, and so can I give the specifics to Edith as far as, you know, because I have a lot of, behavior is just a general topic, and maybe just kind of what the behavior issues are. Who seconded that, please? Nicole. Nicole. Thank you. Okay, so we need to go to F1. Okay, F1 is bylaw revision, second reading. Uh, section 6.4, the section is uh, currently in the case of the CAC uh, chairperson developed the agenda in order to provide clarity. The following revision is included in the packet handout. Insertion of page number and... Um, at the Superintendent's Council, mm -hmm. it was revised a little more because they also are going to do a second reading and pack and pack have also. And um, as you'll see, the, the superintendents have requested the very bottom line. Um, instead of sign off on local plan reviews, which sounds like you do that in isolation. Just to clarify, a CAC member signature will be represented on the call of the plan reviews. They wanted that to be replaced. Well. This is for a reading tonight, and the next time it comes back for a vote, because we've done our first and second meeting. Do we have a jury? 